the environmental issues are absolutely woven in the history of this organization. In the 20 years since 1995, uh, the connections between trade and the environment have grown significantly. And as a consequence, they have become an integral part of the work that we do here. As trade has grown, quite understandably, so have the concerns about the effects that it has on the environment. The WTO, of course, has sought uh, to react to these trends. Uh, our rules give members ample room to pursue legitimate environmental and other policy goals uh, while keeping protectionism firmly in check. And during the last two decades, several environment-related measures have been tested against those rules through the dispute settlement mechanism. We also have a forum dedicated to enhancing our dialogue and improving mutual understanding on these issues, and that's, of course, the Comedium Trade and Environment. And this forum has allowed members to maintain an open channel of communication with each other and with uh, the environmental policy community as well. So we have a pretty good foundation uh, that deals with environmental issues within the WTO. Uh, but there is no doubt that the links between trade and the environment are going to increase in the years ahead. Those discussions are going to increase, the debates are going to increase, and therefore we need to consider how we can build on those foundations that I just mentioned. And this calls for practical and realistic ways to make uh, uh, trade and environmental policies work together, both at the national and the international levels. And we're taking steps to tackle this uh, through our negotiating agenda. The WTO and UNEP uh, have also worked actively and constructively together. So we have the opportunity this year to take a big leap forward through closer cooperation of our organizations, through the UN uh, Climate Change Conference in Paris, and by advancing negotiations here in the WTO, including the Ministerial Conference in Nairobi in December as well. So progress in each of these areas would be uh, the best way to secure a better future for our habitats, our societies and our economies, and therefore to deliver on the vision uh, that the WTO founders had 20 years ago. The issue of environment today, while still a concern in the global trade context of trying to avoid uh, tariff barriers or non-tariff barriers or distorting policies in terms of access to markets, is also increasingly being informed by the very real perception of risk of inaction on some of these environmental sustainability phenomena. The work that we can do together in first of all demonstrating the negative impacts but also the costs of, of uh, subsidies and distorting subsidies but more importantly also demonstrating how countries have tried to address these in a more differentiated set of public policy measures to address the issues that either will enable the global trade regime, the global marketplace, to maximize opportunities to address the objectives of, on the one hand, a global marketplace, but also of a sustainable development pathway. The year 2015 will change once more the way we will do business in the years to come. With the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, there will be a paradigm shift in global public policy and two very significant strands of this shift are on the one hand integration of the economic, social and environmental dimensions of development as never before and secondly the principle of universality. But the principle of universality re-establishes also the role of multilateralism in recognizing a very simple fact. Every country on this planet, every economy in our global economic system will have to accept its responsibility and our commitment is, together with the multilateral environmental agreements and the environmental governance regime that we have already established, to engage even more actively. And I hope we can work together, but more importantly, how member states wish to address these issues under the paradigm of opportunity in the future.